Hey, welcome to this week's stream. Um, I haven't worked on PHP Stand Drupal in a few weeks, or it hasn't had a release in three weeks, so that's what I'm going to be hacking on today. Um, picked about three issues I want to start on. Um, two are stubs with conditional return types to make some analysis a little bit better. And then one that I found when working on a core issue where looking up services dynamically um, wasn't working quite right, and I think it's just due to some old code. So I'm going to jump right in. Um, so Drupal's core URL class, like to string, if you pass true, it returns a generated URL for catching cacheable metadata. But if it's not true or anything else, it just returns a string. But Drupal always assumes that it's both types. So we can create a conditional return type to say, return if thing is false, then it's something else. Um, so we'll go ahead and I'm gonna open up the Drupal core class. Where is, oh, that's right, I have it. Fixtures, Drupal core. We're working on retrofit. I forgot where it's located. So yeah, so if we open the URL, object, class, whatever it's called, to string, and that. So you can see if collect bubble metadata is false, it's going to end up returning a string but it'll turn generated URL if true and PHP sand needs some stubs to prove that. So let's go ahead and we're gonna write a test first. So let's go to type, we'll say actually URL, what do we got here? Oh, hold on, this is supposed to be working. Then why am I having issues? Why did I report this? I know I report it because it's throwing an error for me, but we already have. It's here. What? Okay. Source, collection, no. type. Is supported. Let's go ahead and Remove that. Ah, hmm. well, let's remove this return type extension and go back to conditional return type instead. So that's goofy. Why would it return that on my side? When did I open this? Last week? Oh, shoot. I wonder if it's because I was working on a retrofit and that doesn't have PHP stand Drupal. That could be why. Um, but this will we can use this just to remove this um re dynamic return type extension in favor of a stub so let's go to extension.neon let's remove this extension and go ready to run this test so this should fail and the fix will be to add the stub The test initialize. Let's see, we got the random error that happens. Yeah, so let's rerun it. Then we can remove the reduce the amount of code. All right, yep, everything failed as we thought, or as I as expected. So let's go to stubs. Um Drupal core, Let's see, I should have kept the URL class open. So core, uh, so yeah, so it'd be a URL stub. And we go copy the basics. Class URL implements. This is callback. I think we need to copy this in. So let's go to the string method. 
And then we just have to annotate the PHP doc. That's all. So we'll say, I'll return string. So what do we have here? This is true. Is int. Where does it want to go? Condition. Genetic conditional return types is positive int is int static. Where did this get added in? I wish there's more docs on it. Let's go to the blog. I think it was documented in the blog. Um, but if it is true, otherwise it's a string. So let's go. Conditional return types. I remember I wanted to do this before. Ah, okay, so is true. Return. The quotes go mute. All right, so return as float, question mark. That seems to be it. Let's rerun the test. And it should all pass now. There we go. All right. So I guess that existed. We had the stub. I didn't actually need to. Let's change this URL. We'll rename this to URL. URL to string type test. Name that. And I can go delete. file and status and commit um convert URL to string say URL to string return type extension to stub Origin, Dib 571. Well, that was a little lackluster, but at least that's a good refactor and kills off some code. I'll just say that this fixes 571. This will be a quick one and then we can go on to the access result and that's a big that's a bigger one. We definitely don't have anything for that and that'll be a good benefit which will hopefully fix some Drupal core issues also. Um so while that runs, let's go start on the access results. Record main. And let's create a branch. We'll do access result stub. Let's do new branch, access result stubs, stub. Um, so let's go ahead and create a test. So data, let's do, call it um, inside type new file, access result type test, PHP. Then, Oh, we got a failure here. Shoot. See what that was in just a second. Don't use that. So I can just copy. Let's... I can just cop should have just copied the whole class. But let's just. Yep. Copy the whole class because it's the same thing. Access result type test. And let's do um, let's create this file type data. Let's 
space access result type and let's go let's just copy this here um fix possible return type so let's copy this example Cert type it should be so loud if which is allowed which returns access type allowed and if we say false that would be access result type neutral class so let's go run this test and then i'm going to go see why this failed so that should have been okay test and other versions well let's go to oh yeah why would that other version Oh, what? Oh no, what is this? Stub test validate unknowns input. Okay, I got a stub, that's why. I have to, to stub that out. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna create this pull request and then switch back over to there. So we get status. All right, let's use the PHP Storm interface for committing. Let's say, Add test for access result types. Okay. Normally I don't mind the analyze, but let's do two warnings. What are the warnings? Like a type, yeah, of course. We... Anyway. Push and then do GitHub PR create. Um, what do we want to name this? Access the pull request access result stubs fixes that 480. Submit it and then get back to. This one here, so I have to stub the return type. When you create stubs in PHP stand, you have to stub all dependencies of that class also. And I thought I had, but I guess not. Um, so if we go to stubs, Drupal core, rel, inside security. So let's create a new file, security, stub. See if I can just get core to or PHP Storm to just load the interface for me. Awesome. Yeah. What was that test? See if I can just run it. Source stub test. Here we go. Hopefully I don't need to do anything more for that stub. That should just fix it right up. One day I'm gonna dig in to figure out why I need to do these reruns, because things don't pass. But it's very much a low hanging fruit. No, method call URL to a string has invalid return type. I need to stub that as well. So let's find it and file dot stub. Shoot, am I gonna have to stub bubbleable metadata now? Possibly. No, I don't. Okay, that is already stubbed out. So now I can just rerun the test and it should pass. no all dependencies should be stubbed no um, 
this isn't type hinted, so we'll do the bool. Run it. All right, there we go. Add missing stubs. So I really do appreciate the fact that I could do all this by just writing stub files um, instead of having to have custom code anymore. And the good part is, even though Drupal's coding standards may not support these things out of the box yet, that means eventually these stub files could be replaced by improvements in Drupal core. So stub files enhanced PHP docs. So eventually maybe Drupal core could add this with like PHP stand dash return. I don't know. Um, this is still a very PHP stand type thing. And I think um, Psalm might have something, but that's still very unique to tooling. So this might be a while before it gets merged in, but if, it ends up happening or PHP doc supports things like these out of the box. We'd be very close to having um, this removed and not needed inside PHP sand Drupal. All right, so now that that's running, let's go back to see what happened on this PR. The result stubs should have crashed because of the types not matching. Yep, all right, so let's get back to that. So access result stub, let's check it out. And go to the test that we created. All right, so I'm gonna run this just to get it back in. And we'll have to create our stub files. So core access. So we have accessible access result interface, but we do not have these other files. So let's create the ones we need. Um, so access result dot stub. Namespace. Abstract there. Um, again, I don't remember if in these we need to use the add the use statements. I don't think so. So we'll leave it as is and find out from there. So we have result, we have neutral, stub. Don't need to copy doc block. Access result neutral. Forbidden. And allowed. So let's start with these stubs. Actually, I don't know if we need to stub out access. Hold on. We don't need to stub out allowed or neutral technically. It's inside result itself. So let's go. It's forbidden. Yeah. So neutral. Neutral, allowed, forbidden. Those are okay. It's this allowed if that needs to be fixed. Let's go to the stubs, so access result. No copilot. So condition is a bool, not null, but bool. And we can say return condition is true would be, um, So if it's true, it's gonna, oh, that's right. It does need to be stub because we're returning the objects. So 
So let's go ahead and stub those after all. Oh, good. It's going to let me undo deleting them. What we need is the forbidden stub. Copy. And that means we also need access result reason interface to be stubbed. That's a dependency. All right. So we have allowed if, forbidden if, this needs to be stubbed as well. I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate code. So this is a bool and nullable string, which will return access result forbidden or neutral. Split this over. All right, so access result stub forbidden if allowed if has permission. Static allowed if, I think that will be okay. Huh. Since it's calling. Allowed if has permission. This is true. Static allowed if. Yep, is allowed. Context cache max age. Cache per permission. The only problem is, okay, so it does say this. Or if. Um. And if that could be okay in here, let's just try the test. I think that's about as close as it can get this pass yet. Let's check in Drupal core, which will be interesting to see if this modifies anything for Drupal core. It should not. And the test pass. So let's fix this for um, forbidden if. in we run the test all right um now we so add access result stubs but before i do go back to this stub test and verify that passes Before I push it and then have to rerun it. Feels nice to do some low hanging fruit. Um, it should hopefully have a nice impact. Oh, we don't have refinable. Hold on. I do need the use statements. Access result, access result, definable. It uses cache refinable, and there sh this should be in here already. It is. Let's rerun the test. Let's see that pass. About if has invalid return type. Access result allowed. Hold on. What? Allowed if return is true. Drupal core. Oh, I didn't actually stub these out. 
That's why. Um, so let's go access result. Allowed. So allowed, forbidden, neutral. Let's rerun it. Um, and this one takes a long because it's running Drupal cores PHP stand against and seeing if we break the baseline for anything. Um, breaking the baseline can be a good thing if we fix bugs or it could be bad if we cause regressions. So that passes. Commit and push this. So we'll see if that one goes through. And this access result stub, I really want to see the outcome of the Drupal core head baseline check because that should hopefully fail and fix a lot of false positives inside the baseline. And the idea is to just reduce the baseline count for Drupal core because the better that is, the high the we can start bumping PHP sand up from like level one. I think it's running on level one on Drupal core. That way we can get to level two more easily. I think you can actually see fixtures Drupal core. Oh, is it not in here? Oh, because I don't have PHP stand 10. I don't have Drupal core 10 on my local. Um, right now it's testing against nine. So let's see if this works. No errors. All right. So that's going to pass. So let's squash and merge this. Perfect. And this is. Still running tests. I'm going to update the branch before it gets too far just to make sure that it'll be all okay. All right. So, time to go on to this container return type error. Um, let's go to the main. I gotta check. I know I have to end early because I do have a, a meeting. I gotta figure out what. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna go until about three thirty. It's a little bit shorter, but not much. Um, what's this? I found the error here. Let's do. Let's make the branch. 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 Five sixty three. Oh, yeah, all right, that get service ID, this definitely needs to be fixed. This is container dynamic return type extension. Let's do get service ID, yeah, this is wrong. So what we should do is I need to figure out where this is being tested. Type, no, yeah, type, container. Drupal container, so this has all the names in there. So let's go to container and so we'll do this, um, let's say, Let's copy the snippet function variable service names. Um, actually, I should make this to be a 
I'm going to create its own fixture for it. Data, we'll say bug 563.php. Namespace bug 563. Cut this code out. We'll call foo. Say assert. There's not null. Just to make that happy. All right. So let's go to that test, and we're going to add that case. Go ahead and mark these as you self. Type changed, and we want bug five sixty three. Okay. So let's go ahead, we'll run this, it's gonna error. But the main point is I wanna sit, I'm going to um, do a debug with it. So let's do, what's it here? Method call args, we need to do, yeah, this is, this is old, how a lot has changed. How old is this? Since 2018, some 2021, um, yeah. Unable to specify. Let's run it. Let's see how this is going. It's finishing a test. So once that test is done, then it's going to do the build integration. Here's the head baseline. I don't care about data provided for is invalid. Bug five six three does not contain any certs. Oh shoot, that is right. Um, assert type dot next. It should be cache backend interface class. Yep, that's how. Let's say, let's change this to has. As this has true, type true. Rerun. Actually, no, I'm not going to do this part. Wait, okay, so object type cache bin. So let's now dive into the test. So first off, this is supposed to do method call get args. Um, that's the first step of part of like a refactor from a while ago. So no args. So let's do this. So args equals. Why did it not want to paste? So if count. If count. Second, it have count is not equal to one, so arg one. Now we need to do let's do scope get type arg zero. Expression, let's see, arg, but I don't think args are a expression no they're node abstract node abstract so we need to do value okay so let's do let's do um just 
do a break point here. And debug this. So no, we're, this is before a lot of the type system was there and I didn't re refactor it. Um, and if it's a constant string type, we can resolve it to get the value. This is basically what needs to happen. We can remove this logic here because this is all wrong. Um, so our type, constant string type, there's the value. So what needs to happen is constant strings archetype if count constant strings is equal to zero return the return type is it stop service ID is um, constant string zero I believe this is the fix I can delete that code Parameter when ID expects strings, constant string type given. Oh, shoot. Yep, that will break. Service ID, yeah, value. Let's stop. Get value. That is a string. Boom. All right, now let's just rerun that test. I'm gonna rerun it without debugging it because I think that will fix it. Oh no, so it did fail. All right, let's get back to debugging it after all. Line 34, line 13. Um, right. Let's debug it. While I wait for that to catch, I wanna see where this ended up at with the for baseline check, it's still running. No, I need this to catch on. All right. Um, so we got the arg type, constant string type, service ID. Oh, that's because I'm way, it's scanning everything else. Let's hit stop one second. I need to, I'm just gonna run the one test file. So that way I can get straight to the point. Because I was testing things that weren't, that were part of these earlier files and I wasn't thinking about it. Forgot when you do these assert types, it's gonna scan all the files and not necessarily just the one line that you're testing on. All right, so arg type is a union type. It could be one of these three strings. Oh, constant strings. Service ID is page. Cash bin. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. Well, one, that's cool. This didn't error, but I was hoping it would fix a few things. Um, Reach cache bin if container has cache bin. That code's not even right. One second. I gotta.
I wrote this code wrong to begin with. Um, shoot. Yeah, that's wrong. Um, this should be. Cash dot bin dot. I think. One second. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. And we should. It should be right. Should be in another area, but that's for Drupal 10. So I can't easily copy it. But let's go into cash dot bin dot run render. It's cash dot render. Okay. So let's. Stop this. Oh, shoot. It's a union. This could be tricky because it's a union type, and picking the first one is not the right answer. Um, so, all right. So we should say like our type is union. Hey, enjoy your stand up. Is union there is no is union. Um all right. Well let's just first let's yeah. So if uh union type Loud type is instance of union type. All right, we're just gonna go for that. Or constant boolean type. Let's see. I'm trying to think of the possible ways to do this um if there's some way to like i only want to create a union type if it's needed um So let's see when I only want to create one if there's more than one. Type combinator. Let's see. Add null, remove. Let's see. Remove, remove. Contains null. Union, so types, types count, a, if types count, okay, here we go. So let's, there we, this is what we can do. Um, so let's change this to, Types equals array. You can say um, cut this. We say for each as constant string type. This makes service ID equals constant string type get value and. Instead of return, this should be types equal if service is that else equals return type. Let's say else if. 
SQL. Oops, that's not how you do it. Well, and then we'll say return type combinator union types. All right, because union of those types, that is what is that should do it. So I can put a breakpoint there. All right, so we can iterate through each constant string type and then combine them as needed. Um, so it's the method reflection name. Let's go ahead and we'll change this to a second. args is wrong, let's call it method name equals and we're optimizing it ahead of time so that way we're not calling it all we're only setting this variable if needed so if method name is equal to get otherwise it's equal to has so if it's equal to get um Marlon, do we need third certification in Aqua? Congratulations. I have yet to do one. Um, mostly because I didn't really have a computer to install their, the stuff on. Yeah, I, it, there's there might be some on testing. I'm actually not sure, but no stubs. I'm sure you'll nail it. Um, thanks for the compliment. Uh, I want everybody just to have bugs suck. And as a senior developer, it also sucks having to re review people's code and tell them to fix things. So it's a lot easier if you can have your tools do that, like PHP stand. So I, I, I think that making this better will one, make senior lives easier and juniors won't have to look at their seniors and go, really, I need to fix this, but they can also write better code because tooling will tell them to write the better code. Um, hold on, can I inline this? Let's do actually null. So here, let's. This is actually. Uh, um, if we were doing. Actually, I'm not sure if there's anything in PHP 8 that would have actually simplified that. There we go. So let's go ahead and um, debug through that one more time. And I think this will give us a union type. So the type combinator inside the code does say, does a lot of logic. But the thing that matters here is types count is one. So if there, it turns out to only be one type, it returns the first one, and then it does all of the goodies under the hood, which should make it assert the type correctly. All right, so our types, we have three types that are all Cache backend interface, cache backend interface, cache backend interface suite. Just real quick, I'm gonna step through this part. And see what this looks like. All right, we're gonna just step on over. And I'm gonna hit play. So that's a lot to step through. And the test pass. Sweet. So I'm assuming that it would it um even though there are three instances of the cache back in interface, it condensed them or whatever, like flattened. Let's say it's a union type of the same thing, so it flattened them. Um Let's go run the entire test. This makes me happy because this ref this refactors a bunch of the code. Um, so yeah, we get the default return type here. Oh, beautiful. 
All right. Um, so actually what we should do here, this can be optimized further. So service, this constant Boolean type, service is not equal to null. This has been refactored a whole bunch. Service map. Now I'm using PHP 7.4 as a minimum, I think. So I can actually add these. Yeah, good. So I can add the, re the, the type property. Has array, if that's the getter has. It's a scope type, we select a single. Get the args. I like that. That is a good refactoring. So let's just double check the diff. Um, let's clean up all these unused things. I'm just going to reopen it. Beautiful. And then our test. Let me add that file. And we'll say, I'm gonna merge this access result stub. Let's do, oh, what is this called? Um, resolves constant string. Here, we'll say that it's a, the, dynamic, the, the dynamic return type extension is going to resolve the string types now. Let's push this. Actually, I'm going to wait to push. So I can just rebase it off of main right away. Um, one warning. This got fixed though. Okay, commit anyway. Um, let's go just check out main, get pull, get check out GitHub 563, get rebase main, get push you origin, get 63, PR creates, and this is going to Fix five sixty three submit. Let's delete this branch. That's completed. This now has a ready PR. I need to update this. I need to comment on here. Um, New comment. Dash then there is a bug. There's a bug. Service name is. View, submit review. Oh, and this aired, All right? Linting. I figured there'd be something there, but at least I got that commented. Let's look at the linting. And what broke? PHP CS. Using else if. Oh. You know, I never remember what is the style. I always get it wrong. Else if, let me go ahead and just run this locally. PHP CS. Make sure it passes. And for good measure, PHP stain as well. Uh, 
I'm really happy about this. It removes more lines of code than it adds. It's a bit more succinct and uses the API properly. Errors. Is it, is it literally just the HPCS fix? Uh, analyze the code. Push. So that'll go. I want to find some more low hanging fruit. This is close. I can remove that from the pinned issues. Um, service arguments are not verified against clients construct. That's a big one. Provide a way to disable rules. That's a big one. This is a big one. I think this I need to just close. This is I'm working on split apart render callback. Um, this would be interesting, but it's a big one. We'll put behind a feature flag. Um, report errors of classes with dependency serialization of private properties. That's also a big one. Um, form alter hooks. Check, check, add check for manually created services must specify public or private. Um, oh, um, this seems. is required in Drupal 10. I don't think this is true because I did this in retrofit and it didn't throw an error. I'm just going to not today because I only got another like half hour. Um, Symphony constraint known properties, unable to detect pre render callback dynamic class. Let's see. This is a good low hanging fruit. Allow static calls to set up instance. A hey, not too late. I'm gonna be streaming for another like half hour. Um, just because I have to take a work call and then also space ball time. Um, just plucking off some low hanging fruit for PHP stand Drupal today because I realized it had been three weeks since I've done a release, and usually I do them like weekly. Um with this stream but i took a little break to work on a few other things so just trying to knock down a few items um so let's see use for night watch this is used for night up setup night watch setup i did create an issue to support container injection so let's go ahead and do that So where's that rule? Drupal, global dependency injection rule. Like this seems like another area to be improved. Ignore night watch test setup classes. That's go. Um, let's see, where's that test? There should be a test in here. Drupal Global. Data Drupal static. Um, say bug 515. Bug 5.php. Namespace. 
Night Watch. Set up. Class. Test setup. Set up implements. Test setup interface. Drupal module handler. There we go. Thank you, Copilot, for making life a little bit easier. What is this? Oh, for inside match and enum. Go ahead. Add this one here for bug. Five one five one five. Um, not really solving any big bugs today. I know what did we what did we what did I just merge? Um where's the latest releases? So two commits. Right now it's like a bit of features. So access result stubs now use conditional return types to know if it's like re return if it's the. So if you do access result allowed if, PHP send now understands that it's gonna be access result allowed or access result forbidden, like the type that's returned. Um, refactor the URL to string return type. So that deleted a whole file and just moved to stubs. The next one will be a good feature. I guess this, yeah, this is a bug. Um, we're using variables to retrieve the, when using a variable to get that, like a service that was broken. And I feel like I did a horrible job just explaining that. So let me just show the sample code again. Um, like in here, when working on a core bug, I did a for each over like different cache bins and it tried to go fetch them, but it broke because it didn't know how to resolve the variable. Um, so now it, it properly resolves that, which means we support union types when fetching this and it returns a union type. So this is actually a really big refactor to improve um, the container dynamic return type extension, which will be interesting to see if it fixes, if it breaks the baseline for Drupal core. Like that's kind of my game now is I want to make improvements to Drupal, to PHP stand Drupal and break the baseline. Because when the baseline is broken, that means we fixed, we increased features. Well, at least in the good way when I break it. Um, and this is another little low hanging fruit I had where I was writing a night watch test and then PHP stand got angry at me because I called a Drupal, like the global Drupal inside test set, setup interface. And that can't actually work. So I'm going to run this test and it should fail. And I should make a, make sure I get on a branch right away. Right. Screw that up. So yeah, so this should fail for the right reasons and not that random hiccup. Build their identical in the same reason. Yeah, should be. Avoided now. If I uncomment this string, like this one, better break the baseline because then there's a problem if the baseline's not analyzing these setup files. I know Core has like how many of these? Twelve or five implementations. So, um, now I can hear it does Drupal service module install. Those should be baseline errors that are creeping in. That's fixed. So let's go ahead, create the pull request. Um, that adds the line there. As the test fixture, it's that. So let's just go ahead and say fixes. Commit and push. Four warnings. Namespace, yada, yada, yada. No, yep, that's fine enough. Push. And get up here, create. There we 
go. So that'll be another. Nice little fix. What else do we got? Um, Symphony constraints and unknown properties. Oh yeah, I saw this. Like constraint already exists. Um, PHP stand PHP stand Symphony doesn't seem to help this issue. Where constraints have these like the property is on like the constraint validator, not on constraint. It's something goofy. That's that's gonna be harder to hit in this amount of time. Um this is gonna be difficult because two methods, so like load revision and delete revision, were deprecated from one storage interface and moved to revisionable storage interface. So I think we're gonna have like overlapping deprecations. Actually, let's read this. Maybe this can be solved with stub files. Yeah, okay. Look at that. And Thunder is already tracking this. What's going on here? Baseline, all right. Well, let's look at their baseline file in this. There we go. Entity storage is removed. So let's go ahead and fix this. Um, let's go to main. Check out. Now the only question could be, or no. Um, so let's get back to that error. So in 10.1, I don't have 10.1 locally. So yeah, so entity storage interface deprecated load revision for this revisionable storage interface instead. So let's go look. I really should just get my local. My I, I think PHP saying Drupal's main dev dependency needs to bump to Drupal 10, but I'm waiting because Drupal 9 supported till December. And I don't want to accidentally break that support. Um, oh, oh yeah, Drupal core, lib, Drupal core, entity, and then entity storage interface. Yes, there we go. Load revision, so yeah, oh, to do deprecate in 8.5 will be removed in Drupal 9. Yeah, that to do. Right here, use entity revisionable interface. So is this available? Awesome, it is available. Great. So let's go ahead and open this branch and I'll see if I can get the Thunder team to test this. It's a new branch, 549. Um, Subs, Drupal core, entity, revisionable. Oh, I got a stub entity storage interface. Luckily, that's luckily all you have to copy is the real base right here. I don't have to copy any of the methods unless I need to. Okay, so that's step one. Step two. Now what we need to do is so load revision. This says it's an int. Really, it's probably an int string. Um, I don't want to type that. Ah, oh, is it gonna make me though? Shoot. Okay. I want to see if I can just get away with saying 
not deprecated because really like it says integer but let's face it it's an int or string because Drupal's going to be loading it from the database um, delete revision So I go ahead and run that stubs test and see how angry it gets. Over this, and is one of these finished yet? You know what? No errors. This this dang thing needs to break. Um, where'd the actual PR go? All right, so squash and merge that. Rerun, another issue fixed, a lot of the static calls. And I'm gonna be severely concerned if this doesn't break the baseline because I know there are four or five items in this. What is this using? Check out Drupal core, run, it just says cloning Drupal. This. Um, load revision has parameter revision ID with no type specified. All right, I guess I have to do it anyways. So the PHP doc says that it is an int, but I'm going to call it int string, um, just because I know that. It can support an int. It, it supports a numeric string. And is there a way to document that? Write in PHP code. Like number. Like it'd be great if we could just say number. Um, int integer. Numeric string. Other advanced string types. Let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and. Let's go ahead, copy this over. I'm going to add int slash numeric string because it supports a numeric string. And we can prove that. Loads, it's like load multiple. Yeah, okay, that's a rabbit hole to go proof. Um, load revision has no return type. Oh, there we go. Load revision. And delete revision is also the same deal here, and it's a void. Now, is this going to entity? Rev or entity revisionable interface. Good, I already had that stubbed. Okay. Um, shoot. Now I need to write a test for this. The test only runs on Drupal 10. So shoot, I should have probably made this test first. Um, dang. Okay, data, let's do, oh, I really don't feel like writing a test for this, but I should. Bug, let's do bug 549.php. Namespace bug five four nine. What do we got going on here? One second. Um 
Let's do node storage. Entity type manager, get storage node. If we look at node storage interface, at least I think that's an interface. Yes, it is. Content entity interface, entity storage, translatable revisionable, which implements revisionable storage interface. Great. Although, um, crap, it's not a type. It's, um, Oh, is there a way to test the deprecatedness? Um, I don't know how to test this because we would need to run the deprecation check. Ah. Uh, shoot. Let's see if I can look at some of the tests here. Um, or I might just have to, I'm gonna, you know what? I might just have to push it as is. And then, okay, what? No errors. I don't believe this. Come on. All right, whatever. That's the whole. Yeah, it's on 11.x. Okay, whatever. That's a whole other thing. Um, if it's not happening. Let's... So rules, deprecations, access, deprecated property rule. So I could do it this way. Yeah, I'll have to, but I don't have it as, wait one second, required dev. I do have it in required dev. All right. Let's, um, oh, it's just not really like something I can test. I'm just going to add it as a stub without a test and I'll do a fast follow release if anybody needs it. Um, So any storage interface, it's a revisionable one, which extends that, marks it as not deprecated. I'm gonna go just double check the PHP stand docs. He's deprecated. The break inheritance chain, there we go, just tag it as not deprecated. I'm gonna call that good enough. And just copy this title verbatim. Not that way, but as the commit. So fix five forty nine. Do commit and push. So I have this project that I opened and it's importing all of the change records. So that way we can create tickets for um, PHP stay in Drupal and Rector at the same time. And I'm not, and the hard part is it's not easy to maintain or do collaborative um, triaging, but it's at least something. So when I release this, I can close that issue. Pushed, let's do GitHub PR create. Nope. Let's do submit. Wait for this to finish. 
and then I'm gonna have to run. That that looks like a decent release. I'll be coming through. Um. Oh, why did the Circle CI build fail right away? PHP unit. Load revision uses native. Ah. Stubs. I thought I could do this, but apparently not. I didn't want to, I didn't feel like copying the, what is it? Load revision. Yeah. Load revision. Turn. Or, yeah, this would be whatever. I'm going to just leave it as is, run the stub test, and just copy the PHP doc. Actually, so when you override it, like you have to write over, override everything, it doesn't merge it in. That passed. And fix native union type. And checking on 7.4. Which I'm wondering if I should just drop 7.4 support. I oh I know what I was always waiting for. I was waiting for PHP stand to drop it. Um once PHP stand drops 8.4 support, I will too. Um which I wonder if that's what's coming in 1.11, maybe? Nope. Not yet. Where is the 2.x branch? That's not happening yet. Um, bummer. But one thing that is cool when PHP stand 11 drops is we will have support for the PHP unit bridge from Symphony with um, deprecated scope resolvers. So this means that with Peach, if you're using like at group legacy for Symphony's PHP unit bridge, now the deprecations will be silenced. And what I'm hoping it means is with any of the um, backward compatibility layers we try to write, where it says like if version compare Drupal core is less than blah, um, we can ignore deprecation deprecations inside of those. Um, so that could be interesting. To say the least. All right, I'm gonna say I'm gonna close this. Let's see what's this for. This will I'll wait to close it till this actually merges. Um all right, so there's that one. This will be fixed. I know the next thing, what I want to work on next time for the big feature is this trusted callbacks, like validating the trusted callbacks and the interface and probably cleaning up more of this code. Or cleaning up more of the issues and actually just closing some of these legacy PRs. Unit. Now, I really hope we need to do get Drupal because this is going to bug me. I need to look at this baseline for PHP stand. Now, how? Oh. Is this not history point? Uh, open raw. Like load revisions, not delete revisions, not in here. Where's the other? 
or is it because it's not on that? No, I'm. Or actually, I don't know what the configuration is for Drupal's PHP stand. Let's see. Got this. Ignore errors. Ah, okay. So that's why that one didn't get called. All right. But that's wild that this isn't being caught. So I don't know. I'm not worried about. I should wait for this to finish though, just in case. It just takes so long. Um, all right. Well, I actually have to drop because I have to switch computers to get onto our work call. Thanks for hanging out. I'm going to tag. Well, what version of this would be, would this be now? Um, I'll bring this tab over a little bit. That's the wrong repo. So PHP stand Drupal 1.1.35 will be coming out in a, in a little bit after this call or before this call and after this stream. So thanks for hanging out. I'll be around next week. Next week, I will probably be back working on retrofit. So I want to have, that's my fun project. Um, I want to get PHP template support added from Drupal 7 code into Drupal 10. So that's what I'll be hacking on next time. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you next week.